Good morning, guys. We're grade nine. Today, inshallah, we're going to start in section two of chapter uh, six. So we read the done of chapter five we, and the first section of chapter six. So today, inshallah, we're pass to section two, which is Newton's law of motion. So we already within the chapter five, we keep talking about motion, acceleration, speed, and uh, then the forces that could affect the motion until we end how gravity could affect the motion. So we start talking about how force, uh, different forces could affect the motion of an object. So in this lesson, we're, this <clears throat> lesson we're again now, what, there are some laws already is done or these already some laws states by Newton's to describe the motion or to mention the effect of forces on the motion of an object. So let's start our lesson to find what we're gonna learn in this. So here we said that, So by the end of our lesson, we should be able to describe the Newton first law of motion and explain how it releases, uh, how it relates to objects at rest and objects in motion. Number two states Newton's second law of motion and explain the relationship between the force mass and the acceleration and states Newton third law of motion and give example for, uh, of force pairs. So here like this, so that's me and or from this object is we could figure out that we have three different laws of uh, motion that was already states by or the are stated by uh, Newton. So we're gonna this, you know, so let's start in the beginning. As we described before that Newton, uh, well, one of the most famous okay, scientists that the one who's uh, talking about uh, the forces and keep studying about force and the most uh, famous thing is regarding to the Newton work, which is the gravitational force or the uh, low gravity and a lot of things okay so one of this okay or one of the most important things to uh, with newton work also that he tried to describe how force could affect the motion of an object and he was put some laws okay that describe this okay effect uh, the first law of newton so he said that an object at rest remains at rest and an object in motion remains in motion at constant speed and in straight line unless acted on by an unplanned force. So that's something we predict before or we discussed before in our lessons once we talk about the force and we know the balance force and unplanned force. For example, in your room now, if you have a chair beside you, this chair is in a static position or actually it is, uh, does it doesn't move and actually it will keep as it is, never will change, okay, until you try to apply a force on it, that means you try to push or pull it, okay, so in this case, it will change its position. So the object which you at rest, it will at rest as it is under balance of force, okay, so in this case, we find the chair will not leave its position until you start to push it or pull it. So in this case, you start to apply a force which, cause, uh, which is un unbalanced force, okay, so like this, it will move. So also, if you are moving, or for example, if there is a movement, okay, something is moving, like a, a pole, for example, is running uh, on a smooth surface, let's hypothesize that, or let's assume that there is no friction at all. So this pole will keep moving in the same direction with the same speed because there is no force effect on it, okay, and it will never stop until something stop it or uh, there is another force will affect it. So as we know, once force is applied on an object and once there is unbalanced force applied on an object, it will change the object motion or it will change the object uh, velocity, whatever, uh, or uh, direction that means it will change its acceleration as we studied before. So here, guys, we're gonna find, so Newton's first law of motion describe the motion of an object that has a net force equal zero Newton. So once there is zero Newton, Force, so the object will still in, uh, in the same uh, situation, it will not change. That means if it's static, full static, if it's in kinetic motion, so it will, or it's in motion, it will be on motion, okay? So here we said that we have two parts, okay? The first one, object at rest. So object at rest will stay at rest, okay? As it is on plan uh, until it's affected by unbalanced force, okay? Part two, the one in the motion, it's still in the motion. That means it will keep moving with the same velocity and the same direction if there is no force affected on it, okay? So here we could find that, listen to guys here. So, I just, sorry guys. Okay. So actually you can find, oh, look with me carefully here. For example, okay, if I have uh, this box, okay, and this box like this, okay, so 
this box now it doesn't move because no force applied it. So this box in a static uh, situation. So if I want to make this uh, box move whatever in any direction, so I should apply kind of force. So as the object here, if I just apply the force here equal 10 Newton in that direction, what will happen? The box will move, okay? So this means the, it, the beginning it was at rest and we keep at rest until we apply a force and of course because we apply just a force of one direction only so it's unbalanced force so here we're going to find that the net force here equal to Newton in the right direction so that's what causes the box to move in the right direction but actually if the box okay at rest and it's affected by force okay in two opposite direction both equal to 10 Newton so the net force here in this case equal to zero Newton and that's why the box will keep at rest. So that's here represent the first part of the for Newton's first law that object at rest keep at rest until it affected by unbalanced force. The same that could happen if we have an object in case of motion. For example, okay, if we just have a, a pole, this pole is already running, okay, and this in this direction, okay. And we find as it's already movement uh, move in that direction, well, let's uh, say for example, uh, or just instead of the pool, okay, let's make it a car. Okay, that's a car. Okay, this car is already moving in that direction. It moves with a speed about uh, let's say uh, ten meters per second. Okay, so now this car in case of motion and it will keep move uh, this way because already it has a just force the force of engine make it move it okay in that direction as shown. To stop this car, okay, or to make this car stop, what we should do, we must here the driver must use the brakes or there's something okay, just start to stop the movement of these wheels to stop the car. So it means we should apply a force. This force must be equal to okay the force which caused the car to move so that means if we are going to imagine that the engine has already produced a force that equal about uh, 300 newton okay to keep moving like this okay so we need to apply a kind of force okay that the brakes also should okay have a kind of 300 newton in the opposite direction so like this the net force equal okay zero uh, so zero so the car will stop okay so here it means okay the object which is keep or, or object in motion will stay in motion okay as it's under balanced force and it will never stop until we apply a force that okay it will not stop until we just apply a greater force that stop this car okay from movement okay so here the object at rest stay at rest and the object in motion stay in motion until okay they are affected by unbalanced force that's here the uh first law of motion for Newton. Back to our presentation here, guys. So here we said that, we said that friction and Newton's first law. Of course, as we know that object is moving, so friction between the two objects or friction, as we know, it's the force that opposes the motion. So we are gonna say that means if the, there is a ball is rolling on, uh, on the ground, we find that the ball at, after a certain time, it will stop. Why to stop? Actually, because there is a kind of force, it's actually under unplanted force, because in the beginning, it keep rolling because of the kick or whatever, the push uh, force that affect on it. But after a while, the friction force will build up, build up, build up until the friction force become equal to the kick force, okay? And in this case, the ball will stop, okay? So in this case, we find that friction considered, okay, as a kind of unbalanced force that could affect the object which is in motion, uh, stay or in motion, okay? So here we have something called inertia. So inertia and the Newton's first law. What is inertia? So inertia, it is the tendency of an object to resist a change in motion. You can observe this clearly in your daily life when you are uh, riding a uh, car beside or you are in your car beside your father and you are, uh, it doesn't move yet and suddenly your father start to move in high speed. Suddenly what happens? You find your body or your uh, pack uh, just 
return back to the seat. Okay, or you feel that you are falling inside the seat. Why? Because actually your body resists the change in the motion. It's uh, in a static position and you try to keep in a static position. So once you are moving in opposite direction or you are moving suddenly with high speed, your body try to resist this. The same happens when your father is moving very fast with the car and then he suddenly he used the brakes. You find that your body is going forward, okay, toward the front glass. Why that's happened? Because already your body is taking the speed or it's moving with the same speed of the car. And once he used the brakes, your body still resists or try to resist this change in motion. So you find you are going to fall or you are moving forward. Okay. So this here or that's this kind we call it inertia, and that's be or why that's happened here. Okay. We said that that's be depend on the mass. Okay. That's because of the mass. So mass uh, is the measure of inertia. That means we could measure measure inertia in kilograms also. So an object that has a small mass has less inertia, while the objects which have large masses, they have large inertia. So like this, we find the objects which have large masses, they hardly to change their motion, okay? So that means uh, they try to resist the change in motion, so it's hardly we need to apply a lot of force to be able to change their motion. While light objects, they don't have this uh, large inertia. So simply they could change their motion by simple force that applied on them. Okay, so he, here we find that object with small masses easier to change their motion than object with large masses. Okay, so that's the first law. Okay, or that the Newton's first law. Then we pass to the Newton's second law of motion. Newton's uh, also he uh, he said the acceleration of an object depends on the mass of the object and the amount of force applied. So here, of course, we know this before. To accelerate or to speed up or even slow down, we have two factors will will be affect this kind of change of the motion. First thing, the mass of the object. We know that heavy objects or the objects with higher mass, they hardly to change their motion. So they require a lot of force to accelerate or decelerate. So that's mean. And the second thing, the amount of force. So the more mass we have, the more force need to be applied. And the less mass we have, the less force need to be applied. So here like this, okay, we find that the Newton's second law describes the motion of an object when an unbalanced force acts on this object. So here we find it depends in two factors, the mass and the force, okay? So we said that large masses, okay, or as mass increases, okay, so the acceleration or increases as the mass decreases. So we have inversal relation, that means the larger mass, the hardly change in acceleration. So when the mass increases, the acceleration decreases and vice versa. And here, the second part depends on the force. The more force applied, the more acceleration happens, okay? So here we could find, for example, we can see here, this one try to uh, push this uh, cargo, okay? So once the car is empty, so we find it easily to be pushed, okay? So that means the amount of force which applied on the car caused it to accelerate in a higher rate in first case than in second. Why? Because in second case, although it is the same boy with the same force applied, but as the mass increases, so acceleration decreases, okay? So here, the same force is applied on the car, but due to the change of the car mass, okay, we find the acceleration changes. So here we have inversal relation between acceleration and mass. While here, in this case, okay, to cause the same acceleration, the boy or should or this one should push more. That means we need to apply more force, okay? So here, that's to really show the relation here. So let's try to find that kind of this. So we have a simple rule. We said that the acceleration equal force divided by mass. Why? Because acceleration has direct relation with the force while inverse relation with mass, okay? So like this, we could calculate the acceleration of an object by, um, uh, if you know, it's uh, the force applied on it and its mass. Let's try to answer some of these questions. So he asked you, what is the acceleration of a 7 kilogram mass if a force of 68.6 uh, .6 Newton is used to move its forward earth, okay, or toward earth? So simply here we're going to find he wants to know the acceleration. I know the mass and I know the force. So acceleration, or we can say here simply, guys, let's try to answer this. So we say, well, that's number one. So we say acceleration equal force divided by mass. So the force we have here is 68.6, that's divided by seven, okay? So we are gonna find the number, whatever, okay, the number is. So the number, that will be meter in second, okay? 
square and never forget that the acceleration is vector so we must mention that direction so the direction is toward the earth so we need to measure the magnitude the measuring unit and the direction okay second question here he asks what force is necessary to accelerate 1250 uh, kilogram car at rate of 40 meter per second square so in this time we already have the acceleration and we have the mass he asked about the force which is required so simply in this case we are going to say that force equal acceleration sorry force equal acceleration multiply the mass okay so here how much of the force we need we didn't so the force equal the acceleration is 40 multiply 120 uh, 1250 so here just we're gonna find the result that will be the force and the force measured in newton so that's simply here represent the idea of the second law of newton which uh, describe the relation between the acceleration force and the mass okay so here guys that's our lesson for today. Okay, next time we're gonna continue this uh, lesson. If you have any question, you can contact me online. Thank you, goodbye.